Okay, have you guys decided what? Yeah, yeah. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'll ask you one extra. And then I'll ask you one extra. And change that to one. What sort of things do you want to find out? Uh, well, the numbers. These. these. And then uh, most, most of the numbers, yeah. And then. And how many people they've helped. Hi, Stephen. Can you go? Hello, guys. How are you? Good, thanks. Nice to meet you. I'm Stephen from the Garden Team Centre. Can you be homeless and still have a roof over your house? It's a really good question, actually, because some people don't think about that. They think of homeless purely as people that are sleeping on the street. And it's a very, it's, it's, it's probably the toughest category. If you're sleeping on the street and you're outside in the rain and it's cold, imagine what it's like at Christmas now when we're you know, we're sitting around with our presents under the tree and it's lovely and warm and we've got that security of, of our family. Um, it's really hard to think that there are people outside, sort of, you know, all over London that are sleeping rough. But there are the ones then, exactly as you touched on, that have a roof over their head. Maybe they're living somewhere in a very violent household and, and they don't have security of their home. Maybe they, they left home or been thrown out of home and they're now having to sleep with an auntie or an uncle or a best friend. You could be in, you may have heard of a thing called a squat, which is an empty building you could go into, or homeless shelters. But you do get this um, category called sofa surfing, where, it's, where you're basically sleeping on a friend's sofa or even on their dog bed or on their floor under the stairs, like Harry Potter was. And, and that's a very, very big category. So hidden homeless. And because you're not sort of a rough sleeper and you're not being recognised by government statistics, they don't even know you exist. What exactly is hidden homeless? Hidden homeless is is really when you just don't appear on any any government statistics. You know, we spoke about just yeah. two thousand seven hundred yeah. sort of official ones that sleep on the street. But you can imagine now if you're sixteen, seventeen, you've had a row with your parents, you've left, you've gone to stay with this friend one night, another friend another night. You never actually get picked up by the system, so technically you are homeless because at any point in time you need to talk. It might be an idea actually for you guys to um, think about sort of your own thoughts on homelessness or youth homelessness and maybe put together um, some lines of um, a story or a poem or a piece of prose or something. And maybe if everybody thought of a theme together and wrote a few lines down together, we could kind of get a really nice piece which would sum up you know, your views on. I pulled my blankets higher up as I sat under the dark bridge on that rainy November night. I heard the footsteps and conversation of a young couple back from a meal. I could smell the succulent of chicken wafting through the air. My stomach grimaced in despair. I have never felt so alone. I have been eradicated from the world. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to be. No one to see. It's just me. The cold wind covers up my body. The eternal darkness plays with my mind. Hunger, thirst, and nobody there. The life of a homeless person is full of despair. The cold is seeping into my chest. I can't run away from this loneliness. A few hours of hope, but then it's a slave. There goes my life, lost in the rain. I'm delighted to have this opportunity of thanking you for your generosity and support towards the centre. In fact, I'm rather glad you discovered Cardinal Hume Centre and the great work that it does through its staff to turn around so many lives of young peoples and families. I think your involvement and your generosity towards this centre will give you great satisfaction because the work that is done here is really first class and to have a share in it is indeed satisfying. I'm glad to thank you just now as we approach the feast of Christmas where we thank God and celebrate his great gift to us.